So with that, let me kick off to this uh, word with Colossians 1.18. Colossians 1.18 is a very powerful. In fact, the, 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 the verse in Colossians from 15 all the way to 20, it actually summarizes the in, in very short four or five verses the supremacy of Jesus. He says he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Or in some versions say that in all things Jesus may have the supremacy. Now this, if you read that verse casually, if you read this particular verse casually, you know, it really doesn't mean a lot of things to us. But when the Bible says that he is the firstborn from the dead, the reason why Jesus is the firstborn from the dead, which is called, which, which he is the blessed one, this firstborn from this dead is the blessed one. The very firstborn that came from Adam and Eve called Cain is not the blessed one. That firstborn, even though it was the firstborn, the first children, the first child that came out of the first couple, in 1 John 3, 12, um, the Lord, through the Apostle John, has got this to say about this person for, called Cain. And through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, John the Apostle said, not as Cain, who is of the wicked one, and murdered his brother. I believe that when the Apostle John wrote this in the book of in the Epistle of John, he, he in the, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and having access to certain revelation and understanding that we probably don't have, but we are increasingly uh, uh, God is revealing is Cain who is of the wicked one. How can Cain, who is the firstborn, as we have mentioned a few times, uh, be considered as the wicked one? So today I just want you to focus that Cain is the firstborn among the first couple and yet God considered him the wicked one. And Cain, who is the firstborn, has been separated from Seth. As we mentioned before in the book of uh, Genesis 4 and 5, there is the separation of the lineage between Cain and Seth. Why is that so? Because the firstborn hold a very strong significance. Now let's go back to Colossians 1.18 again. It said, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things, he may have supremacy. That means actually the firstborn for Adam and Eve. Something dropped? For the firstborn for Adam and Eve. They, this is supposed to be the one of the, the representative, representative from the lineage of Adam and Eve. They are supposed to hold supremacy. And so, so I, I don't want to go too much into detail, but suffice to say that actually the firstborn is supposed to be very blessed. They have the double fold blessing. There is the, uh, the, 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 the uh, blessing of the firstborn. Uh, the birthright is under the firstborn. But I want you to notice that the very firstborn, called Cain, actually was removed. It was set aside. And therefore, Cain has his own lineage. Seth has his own lineage. And therefore, because of that, this is actually a, a very important thing that since then, the firstborn has been, as we mentioned the last few services, the firstborn has been put aside. Yeah? And then something significant happened in the book of uh, Exodus. As we all know, then in Exodus, um, when the angel of death passed by Egypt, in the last plague, you notice Every firstborn in Egypt was slaughtered. Every firstborn was slaughtered. But the children, the household of Israel, who has killed the lamb and applied the blood on the doorpost as a symbol of Passover, that means somebody has died on their behalf. Every firstborn in Israel was spared. But every firstborn in Egypt was taken away. It's a very serious thing. It is not just um, the plague that's going to force uh, Pharaoh to let go of the people but actually it's the judgment it's the foreshadow of killing the firstborn which is symbolized by Cain which actually they consider belongs to the evil one despite the fact he's the first son and actually symbolizing the sparing of the Israelite of their firstborn the Bible says take a look at the book of uh, ooh, I hope I got this right yeah Mm. Sometimes it eludes you. Eh? Wow, what verse was that? Yes, Numbers chapter 3. 
Numbers chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. He said, Now behold, I myself have taken from the Levites among the children of Israel, instead of every firstborn who opens the womb among the children of Israel. Therefore the Levites shall be mine, because all the firstborn are mine. On that day I struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. I sanctified to myself all the firstborn of Israel. Now what does this verse mean? What this verse means is that in this particular act in Egypt, there is a foreshadow of God putting to death the firstborn that belongs to the wicked one and sanctify the firstborn of Israel by the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. That means the children that were spared, every firstborn that was spared in Israel is a picture of the redemption of firstborn under Christ Jesus, whom the Bible says, who is the firstborn amongst the dead. Jesus is the firstborn among the dead and this is foreshadowed in the book of Exodus. When every of the children of Egypt was slaughtered, they represent the children of wickedness like Cain. And then the children of Israel, it is a foreshadow of them being passed over by the blood of Jesus, sanctified by the blood of Jesus. That means it's actually a foreshadow of the death of Christ, redeeming themselves a newborn, a new creation, whom the Bible says, who is the firstborn among the dead. I don't know whether if you follow this. If you don't follow, no problem. Go back and think about this. It's a little bit deep. But in this picture, um, the, the plague in the, Egypt, in, the, in, the, in the last plague in Egypt is not just actually slaughtering the firstborn to force Pharaoh to let go of the people. Actually, it's a foreshadow of the redemptive work of, the, of Christ to separate between the evil one and the righteous one. And that is why Jesus is called the firstborn among the dead. Because the firstborn holds in whom, who has the fullness in all things, he may have preeminence. That means actually the firstborn from Adam holds a very, very powerful position. But unfortunately, through the event that happens in Genesis chapter 3, the firstborn, the Bible says, whom belongs to the wicked one. So let me, let me give you a postulation. And I say this postulation means this is a conjecture. This is my understanding. As we have built up from the past, that means the first one from, from Adam and Eve actually inherits the DNA of the, the same fruits that they partake, called the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that holds death. The Bible says, on the day you eat, you die. That means that tree possesses death. God is a possessor of life. Satan is a possessor of death. Light is represented by God. Darkness is represented by Lucifer, the ex the ex-angel, the out-of-job angel, you know. And, and so you find that when, when the death came, actually when death came, when, when, when man took that tree, there is the nature that's being partaken. Let me, let me in short, this is my conjecture here. Yeah? That means Lucifer understand the importance of the firstborn. And he managed to squeeze himself in creation, tainting his own nature with Cain through the fruits. Now how this happened, I do not know. Because the Bible doesn't say. But suffice to say that because the firstborn is supposed to be a blessed one, they're supposed to, like Jesus, because the first firstborn is rejected, Jesus, the second firstborn, so to speak. You may use this word. Yeah. Again, like I say, if you don't quite agree, don't worry, we can discuss. And because of that, this firstborn has been made away with, and Jesus now becomes the first among the dead. That's why the new creation is not just that you have the gift of righteousness. In the, in the court of heaven, in the kingdom of God, the new creation means now this new creation is completely separated from posterity since Adam time right down to Jesus time. Does that make sense? Because all the way, even today, everyone born in the natural has to be born again. The Bible says in John 3, chapter 3, unless one is born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. That means today, since, since uh, Adam and Eve fall, every individual born is born dead spiritually. That's why they cannot see the kingdom of God until John 3, 3 says, unless you're born again, you know, you cannot see. By the way, I love this verse. You see, he cannot see. He never says you enter. Born again, you only can see, but you don't enter yet. Entering the kingdom of God uh, 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 requires more than just being born again. Born again qualifies you to see the kingdom. That means now I can see. Without born again, I can't even see the kingdom of God. That means I have no access 
So to be born again, actually God completely creates a new creation, washed under the blood of Jesus, nothing to do with the, with, with the, uh, with the Adamic nature anymore. This new creation is so powerful. There is a particular verse that I want you to see, which I didn't give you in Nettia. Take a look at Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. It said that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You see? So that means God said, this former conduct, this old man has to be put away. Why? Because this old man is stained with the bloodline of the nature or the fruits that Adam partake and Eve partook in the Garden of Eden. And he said, be renewed in the spirit of mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God. That means the old man... If this verse says the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness, that means the old man has lost this nature. That's why you need to be born again. Make sense? That means that old creation holds a very strong significance. That means in the kingdom of God, no matter, that's why, no matter how good you are, no matter how compassionate you are, no matter how generous you are, no matter how nice you are, it, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven because well, you're under the old nature. That's why. That's why to enter the kingdom of God has nothing to do with your personal virtue because you can be the most virtuous person but you hold the old DNA called the old man. That's why the old creation cannot get into the new creation. Unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. So the new creation is a very significant thing. That means God has managed after 4,000 years of waiting, just as like the children of Israel waited 400 years in Egypt, which is a foreshadow of Jesus coming in the 4,000 year. And from that 4,000, God, through the blood of Jesus, reversed the entire generation that is stained of humanity that stained with the DNA of the tree of the knowledge and good and evil that carries death. So new creation is very significant in the kingdom of God. It's not just, oh, we are now we are made new, we are all righteous, which is from our perspective, from God, God's perspective, because in His new creation, only the new creation can constitute the kingdom of heaven. Any old nature will not get into there. We'll come to that later. And so, I want you to notice something. I was tonight, to that, tonight. Today, I want you to pay specific attention to the importance of the firstborn. And we are thankful that Jesus now becomes the firstborn among the dead because he reversed what happened in the Garden of Eden. That means the entire creation has to die. God deemed it so bad that you have to die. That's why when you are buried in baptism, you are buried in his death, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6. You are buried in his death and that you are raised a new creation. Now that's important because only in this new creation we can see the kingdom of heaven. Only in this new creation that is suitable to eventually result in the new Jerusalem. Now the, the, the first bond is very important. I want, to, I want to highlight the importance of the first bond. So let's get back to Numbers one more time. Numbers 3, 12 and 13. He says that I have, you see, so instead of the firstborn becoming the high priest, the firstborn is supposed to be high priest, and because of what takes place in the Garden of Eden, God now chose Levites as the high priest. Why so? Now Levites is the fourth from the, from the, from the, from the, uh, from the birth, from the lineage of Jacob. The firstborn is Reuben. How many knows what Reuben did in his lifetime that he's got rejected? He didn't marry, but he defiled his own father's concubine. That means he personally went to his father's concubine and have a fiscal relationship. And so Reuben was cast off. Firstborn, rejected. Second and third, because of what they did in the people in Philistine, they were rejected. The violence that were committed to them. You can read in the book of Genesis and find it for the fourth Levites that represents the high priest. So instead of the firstborn being chosen as the high priest, God said, I've sanctified to myself all the firstborn, both men and beasts, they shall be mine. And now therefore the Levites shall be mine because the firstborn are mine. So Levites actually took over the first the position of the firstborn. So they took over the position of a high priest. The tribes of Aaron come from Levites. So Aaron was the first man that ministered in the tabernacle of Moses. 
He's the first high priest that minister in the tabernacle of Moses. And this is important because why? It tells you about the role. Now let me show you some similarity between the tabernacle of Moses. Take a look at Exodus chapter 28. Exodus 28 verse 17 to 19. He says that you shall put on setting of stone, four rows of stone. So he went through first row, second row, third row, and then the fourth row. That means there are 12 stone in the setting. This is, by the way, it's a bit technical. Just stay with me, okay? I know today you're, there's a big tendency, your spirit will depart. But this is the effort of the priest. Now, what is this significant? Guys, listen to this. very important. The ephod of the priest contains 12 stone. That means this is a, a vest they put over. They call it a breastplate. They put over to represent the role of the high priest. And you know who has this high priest. Take a look at who has this same vest. Take a look at Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 18 to 21. Ezekiel 28, uh, 18, 28, 18 to 21 is talking about Lucifer, the first, the first high priest. The Bible says that he was the creator, he was the anointed cherub that ministered before the throne of God. He said, you defile your sanctuary by the multitude of your iniquities. Hey, did I say 18 to 21? I think we have to reverse back a little bit, not 18 to 21. Um, the part, uh, I think, is maybe 15. Uh, 17, 15 to 17. Let's try 15 to 17. That year. Sorry about that. Yep. You see, you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created. This is referring to Lucifer, by the way. The first, the archangel. You see, till iniquity was found in you, by the abundance of your trading, you are filled with violence. You have seen, therefore I cast you out. And therefore, you see, your heart, listen to this, you see, I destroy you, O covering cherub. Why? Because from the midst of, from the, midst of the fiery stone, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. And you were corrupted. You were corrupted, you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor, and I cast you to the ground. Netia, you have that verse where they talk about his covering was stones. I think it may be 13 and 14. Is it 12 to 14? Yeah, I think it should be 12 to 14 if, if we can have that. 12 to 14 describe how Lucifer was actually, he said, you were perfect. It does say the Lord, you were the seal of perfection. This is actually talking about Lucifer, the archangel. Yeah? Full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. R Lucifer is really a he, beautiful creature. Those who have claimed they saw him before, he say, he say, you, you, you take the most handsome guy, the most beautiful woman, is a combination of two. Yeah? He say, you were in the Eden, the Garden of God. Now, this Eden is different from the Eden in Genesis. Why do we know? He said that every precious stone was your covering. The same covering, the same vest, the same breastplate that the priest, high priest covered himself with, called the, the ephod. The same ephod as 12 stone covering. It's the same stone that Lucifer was covered with. But Lucifer has got nine stone. The highest priest has got 12 stone. So he went on to detail all the different covering. Yeah. And then he has got something extra. He said, the work mentioned in the timber and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. In the King James Version, he said, the pipes and the timber was in him. That means the instrument was inside his body. This is the archangel that ministered before God. He's the person that actually we believe that, historian believe and scholar believe that he is actually the worship, so-called angels, the arch worship angel ministering before God because instrument was built in the system. Pipes and timber were in him. This one he said, oh, to prepare on the day you were created in the King James Version that the timbers were inside him. That means this angel was the high priest that took the... the he, that means this is the angel that took the... So, or rather he was in this position before God appointed the Levites. That means the Levites took over the firstborn because the firstborn was rejected. So in other words... This was the role before the Levites took over. This was the role that Lucifer was being used. In this dimension, in the vest that he carries, he actually is a picture of the high priest before the Lord. He was the anointed cherub. He said, you were the anointed cherub who covers, I establish you. You were in the holy mountain of God. And listen to this, you walk back and forth in the midst of fiery stone. This is a different garden of Eden. There was no fiery stone in the Eden that's found in Genesis chapter 3. This is either in heaven, and very likely this is a story before Genesis 1. 
Guys, Genesis 1 is not the beginning. Genesis 1 actually is part 2. Okay, this one we reserve another day. Yeah? But the point that what I'm trying to say is this. The same high priest that have the ephod that he wore with pure stone, those are man-made. But Lucifer has got stone embedded in him as a creation. Now, this is a different level, a different dimension altogether. You're talking about a different species altogether. But what was it? But what is the significance? The significance with this piece of stone that he wore, he was actually doing the job of a priestly a role of a, of a priest. Because he was an anointed cherub who covered, that means he ministered before God. And this position was lost at the fall. And so when God created Adam and Eve, actually it's part two. So the firstborn is supposed to take this role. But somehow Cain, the firstborn, whom John, whom John considered he belongs to the wicked one. Now, assuming we think with this thought, because Cain was rejected, God has to create then a new species, so to speak, foreshadowed by this group called the Levites. The firstborn was rejected amongst the tribe of Jacob, Reuben, and then you have got, uh, I guess I forgot the two other names, but the fourth is Levite. So Levite took over the position of the very firstborn. Now why is this significant? Because let me tell you, uh, let's take a look at um, Gen uh, uh, Revelation chapter 21. Wow, I forgot to put this verse in for you, Netia. I have to look for this verse or so very quickly. Revelation, uh, Revelation, <laughs> Revelation chapter 21. What is this? Revelation 21. This mic today a bit hollow. Sounds a bit hollow. Why is that so? In Revelation 21, it talks about the new Jerusalem that comes down. We start with verse, uh, verse 12. No, verse 10 to 12. Netia, sorry. Verse 10 to 12. Revelation chapter 21, verse 10 to 12. And the Bible says, He carried me away to a great and high mountain, showed me a great city, the holy Jerusalem. Listen to this. Descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was most precious stone, jasper, crystal, high wall with 12 gates, 12, 12 angels, and written on them the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. And then we move down, Netia, to verse 18 to 20. Yes. We move down from 18 to 20. So this new Jerusalem, the entire city is built with all the precious stone, with all the jasper, the gold. And say the construction of the wall is jasper. City was pure gold, like, like, like clear glass. Foundation of the wall adorned with all kinds of precious stone again. First foundation, jasper, sapphire. This 12 stone is exactly the 12 stone worn by the high priest. That is why the Bible says that you know, on the day, the fire will reveal the quality of work, whether your wood, hair, and straw, gold, silver, precious stone. That means the very material that's going to build the new Jerusalem. The Bible says we are called living stone. The church is called the living stone. God built the church. We are called living stone. The new Jerusalem is called precious stone. That means part of your journey in, on, on earth is to progress through the work of the Holy Spirit. Precious stone represents the Holy Spirit because like precious stone, it represents the hidden work of the Holy Spirit. Precious stone is only found hidden in the, in the ground, under the earth. So the work of the Holy Spirit is to transfer, to transform us from living stone to precious stone because the entire foundation of the new Jerusalem is built with precious stone. It's very significant, guys. That means, in, in short, that's why, not, not, that's why many are called few or chosen. You know why? Because many Christians, they were just a stone that became a living stone, but they never progressed from a living stone to precious stone because they rejected the work of God. Most of us have stopped growing with God after two years, three years, some six months, some five years. And then we reach a plateau, and then we just continue this way. And so we wasted a lot of time in our life that means the Holy Spirit has stopped working in our life. That means we continue to serve God, we continue to be part of the church, but the inner working of the Holy Spirit has stopped for a long time. That means you have just remained living stone. Because precious stone takes years 
it requires the heat, it requires fire to burn away all the dross. That means in order to become precious stone, the stones must be hidden in the ground for a long time. And then plus the work of the heat with the minerals, it melted and become precious stone. Now this all is picture of the work of the Holy Spirit. Now what does all this mean, guys? Listen to this. God in turn actually came to be the first priest. The firstborn is supposed to be dedicated to God for priestly material. So actually, in the 12th tribe of Israel, Levites do not go to war. They don't go to work. They only serve in the tabernacle. So they receive everything they receive for their sustenance is given, provided by all the 11 other tribes. They, they give into the house of God. The Levites live off whatever that's been given. Now, this is very significant because the job of the Levite is to minister unto God as a priest. That means they stand in between. They get the priest, priesthood stands between two realms, between the spiritual and the natural. And that's why Aaron, sorry, when Moses interceded for the children of Israel, when they were rebellious, Moses stand in between like a priest because there was judgment. You know, the children was rebellious. The earth opened, there was earthquake. A lot of evil people were swallowed under the earth. Moses went ahead and took the censer, went through the camp as an intercessor and interceded, interceded for the death of his fellow brothers and sisters who were rebellious. The role of a high priest is very significant, guys. We have reduced the role of a high priest. The priesthood of the believers in the New Testament the blood of Jesus make every believer a priest, actually. That's why we are called. Can we have the... Do we have the New King James Version, Anatya? This is only NIV. Okay, the New King James, let's do Revelation 1.6. That's why in, in the book of Revelation 1.6 and 5.10, they say that we have, God has made us to be kings and priests. And let me close with this story. He made us kings and priests to his God, to his Father. To him be glory, dominion forever. Yeah? That means your role... <sighs> Okay. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, okay, wake up. <laughs> okay. I know you have a slide, but just in case. Lah, eh? That means first God raised us up in Christ Jesus in Ephesians 2.6, right? God raised us up in Christ, seated us in Christ Jesus in the heavenly realm. Ephesians 2.6. That means what does that mean? That means when we are seated in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus, that is a position of a king. Amen? That's a position of king. Now, position of king is not to be taken lightly. A lot of people say, oh, now I'm king, you know, they, they, they just enjoy that position, but they don't do the role. They don't function that role. They just like the idea, oh, I'm a king. Now, what does that mean? If you're a king, that means you're supposed to rule. King rules. King don't and just enjoy it, unless you're a corrupted king, like most of those king, chobo, chobo making one, huh? you know, they just you know, enjoy it and they waste their life. Right? But good kings, those who are righteous, they rule, right? The king is supposed to rule. So God raise us up and make us sit together in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus. This is the position of rulership, which many believers actually accept, but very few function as the other second row called priests. So most people don't do the priest. That's why you, when you ask for prayer meeting, usually 1% of the church show up. <laughs> yep. Well, you know, I, 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 you know, people will come with all kinds of creative ideas. I understand because you know why? Because this is Satan's job to hold you back from functioning as a priest. It is his interest. He has to reduce the number of priests because why well, your role is very. Let me prove to you by the story of Esther. Ta -da -ta 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 -ta. Let's start the story of Esther today. Esther is a very beautiful story. Those of you who know Esther, the story, Esther is Miss Gorgeous. I mean, this woman must have been beautiful because to be chosen as a queen, you know, you got to be beautiful. You, you must be also physically attractive. So the story begins in, the, in, in Persia. When Vashti was supposed to bring before the king, the king wearing her royal crown. This is after the king Ahasuerus got, you know, he, he wanted to celebrate the glory of his glory of his, his empire, his 127 province from, 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 from uh, Persia all the way to India. By the way, they, they, they conquered India also. And so he, he just wanted to, much like National Day, you know, but this went on for six months. National Day, one day, their celebration, six months. And after that, another one, a couple of weeks of 
celebration makan time macam you know so 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 when all these are done finally say hey let's bring our queen you know to parade her so that they can the bible says so that she can wear her royal crown in order to show her beauty to the people and the official for she was beautiful to behold so vaste herself is miss Persia. i mean it's not to be sniffed at i mean she also you know can make it one you know and so but what but queen vaste refused to come the first queen rejected Mm, you find every time first one so rejected. Somebody must have said, "Well, thank God I'm the second girlfriend." <laughs> okay, nothing to do with that. Yeah. So Queen Queen Vashti refused to come. Brought command brought by the eunuch, and therefore the king was furious, and the anger burned within him. So of course you embarrass the king. And so in the next verse, what I gave you is what, now? and then it be pleases. So now the the, the 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 advisor told the king, say if it pleases the king, let a decree go up from him, let it be recorded in the law of the Persian and Medes that it will not be altered that Vashti shall come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her a royal person to another who is better than her. So this woman who was supposed to be queen, because of pride, sounds like Satan. She was very beautiful because of pride. The same reason. Pride that caused Satan to fall, and the same reason that pride is going to cause a lot of men of God to fall as well, you know. And as a result, she was replaced. Yeah. Fast forward, chapter two, and so amongst all the women they chose, finally they shortlisted. This woman was chosen. Now the young woman pleased him, pleased the eunuch. That means this eunuch chose shortlist all the women. Choose, 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 and then eventually found this one the most jambu one, you know, the most attractive one. You know, the type, right? And then this girl got the king and she was a completed 12 month preparation. Yeah, you notice that every lady that's supposed to be the wife of the king goes to preparation. The bride of Christ today is going to preparation, in case you do not know. The church, the bride of Christ is going to preparation. The church is the future bride of Christ. Amen? That means you are now under preparation. God is preparing you for to present yourself to your, your king. Yeah? And so for days of preparation, six months of oil and milk, six months of perfume and preparation for beautifying woman. You talk about beauty treatment, this is the ultimate beauty treatment. Okay, Six months of doing nothing, wrap up in oil and milk, nothing but perfume, preparation for beautifying the woman. This is what you call a holiday. This is called a spa. This is the original spa. Okay, the rest of the spa you see today all commercial, all blah blah, right? This is the ultimate spa. Six months, twelve months all together. Even you ugly, you become beautiful after the treatment. You know. So this is the kind of spa that can resurrect the ugly. Okay. And so this, so this is a beautiful process. That if you are really beautiful, we make you even more beautiful and more desirable. This is how important it is today. By the way, your 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 king is preparing you. That means everything that's of the old nature has to go. Because now you're a new creation. The funny thing is this, we are a new creation, but most of us walk in the old way. Can I, can I say that one more time? Though the Lord said that in Him, 2 Corinthians 5.17 say, Therefore those who are in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. We are a new creation, but if you are a new creation, still walking in the old way, the old mind, then actually you're just new creation by name, but in practice you belong to the old creation. And nothing from the old creation will enter into the kingdom of God because nothing from Vashti, the old queen, will make it to the kingdom, into the kingdom of this king. Amen? So now Vashti is being called, and then as a result, what is the next one? Uh, 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 12, verse 12. Uh, ah, yes, yes, thank you. And the Bible says, and the king loved Esther more than the other woman. For she why? She obtained grace and favor. Sounds like the church. It is by grace through faith, right? Today the church is under such favor from the Lord Jesus more than all the virgin. Virgin is a picture of Christians washed by the blood of Jesus. And so he set the crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Vashti is the old creation. Esther is the new creation. Today you are set with grace and favor. Your king, your king favor you. That's why in your life, you're going to experience God's favor. You're going to walk in His grace. It is by grace through faith, not our works, that we should boast that this is a gift from the God. 
Yeah? And so as Queen Esther represents the new creation, she is given, she is showered with grace and favor. Simply because Christ is in you, you are in Christ. As a new creation, this is the blessing that you are enriched with. That's why the unsearchable riches of Christ, the length and breadth, height and depth of the love of God, the Bible says. So in, in Christ, you are lavish just like Queen Esther, above any other woman. Your Bible says you obtain grace and favor in his sight. So today, if you are in Christ, walk in the favor of God. Be aware of your favored position. Every day, don't ask for favor. Favor is with you already. Amen. Don't ask for blessing. Ephesians 1 13 is 1 3. It says, For God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus. You have been blessed already. So there's no need for you to ask some more blessing. Just receive it by faith. Amen. So everything has been given to you. In fact, you, you can corroborate further with 2 Peter 1 3, where he said that in his divine power, he has given us all things pertains to life and godliness. Everything in this divine power he has given us all things. That means all things being given to you. Don't need to ask anymore. That means if you have all things, that means now what you need to do is to live that life. Prepare yourself for the return of your king. Amen. So verse 12 says this. And then uh, the next one is the next verse I gave you, uh, uh, Netia, for uh, Esther. I think it's chapter 3, is it? Yeah. Chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. He said, when Haman, okay, now introduce Haman. Haman is a picture of Satan. This man rose to be the highest position in the land. Sounds like Lucifer. He rose to be the highest position in the land, have access to the king. And when he rose to the highest position, he expects people to pay homage to him. But everywhere he go, everyone pay respect to him, except Mordecai, which is the uncle of Esther. Mordecai is a Jew, but when Haman dis decided to display his arrogance and demand obedience, Mordecai said himself, I said, no, no, I only bow down to my God, not to you. And he was offended. And the Bible says, Haman was filled with wrath, for he disdained to lay hand on Mordecai. So instead of going to one person, he developed a scheme and said, you know what, instead of just going to Mordecai, let's go to his entire trap, so that it's not personal. And so he said, for they told him, the people of Mordecai, instead Haman sought to destroy all the Jews who were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, the people of Mordecai, namely the Jew. The anti-Semitism spirit exists a long time ago. And so this is a picture of Satan who decided to exterminate all the human in earth. His job is to bring you to hell, to populate and plant and to populate hell as much as for Jesus came to reverse that. Amen? And so when this news went out, the whole of Persia, all the Jews was in mourning. They say, wow, this is bad. That means we are going to die on the sad day. In fact, in fact, Haman, excuse me, Haman was prepared to pay from his own pocket to sponsor this entire project. That means every expenses incurred by the soldiers that go around exterminating the Jews, all my own treasure I pay. Wow, steady, bro. Right? He said he was willing to sponsor this entire genocide. This is exactly the picture of what Satan does on earth. His desire to kill, steal, and to destroy. Today, his agenda hasn't changed. Last time was for the Jews. Now they go after believer. You are the new creation. Now his target is you. And therefore, your role, if today you're not under attack, somebody else in other country are under attack. That's why Singaporeans don't pray that much. Because we are safe in Singapore. So, you know, we are good. So the urgency is not there. So if we say that Chinese being persecuted, okay, well, I feel so sorry for them, but but I feel bad for them, but you know, nothing you do with me, you know. What I mean? Oh, Persia, the people in Iran are being persecuted. Well, I feel sorry for them, you know. Maybe you do a short prayer, but that's about it. And then chapter four. Hey, uh, are we done with chapter three yet? Anatya, what's the next uh, verses in chapter three? So, and he pleases the king. He said, I will pay ten thousand talents of silver in the hand of those who do the work. To bring it to the kings. That means he's personal sponsor. Can you imagine this man is so he's so enterprising that you know he's so rich. They say, I, I will sponsor this job. No, don't worry. The king don't even have to come out the money. I will come out the money. And then the next verse. 
And so Mordecai, when Mordecai learned all that happened, man, that fellow tore clothes, put on set clothes, all these are uh, sign of mourning. That means you, he, he went to a state of mourning. Yeah? And he cried a loud and bitter cry. He went as far as the front of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed in sackcloth. To, to symbolize that, you know, that tragedy is going to befall their entire tribe. Did I give you any more after this, Natya? No more already, yeah? Okay, so, I, 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 because otherwise we're going to go to the entire story. We'll finish at 6 o'clock. How many of you have not read the book of Esther? Have not read? Besides, besides Esther's cousin, anybody else haven't read? No, you, you, you. Don't like that, lah. why you yawn so loud? Yeah. So, so only, only, only Melody, right? If you have read the book of Esther, eventually you know that Haman, Haman built a, a gallow for Mordecai. He built a gallow for Mordecai because he was so hateful of Mordecai. And so he decided to do this. And there is, I think I gave you chapter 4. I think in verse 13 and 14. Very pivotal role. These two verses is very pivotal. And Mordecai, Mordecai approached Esther. He said, can you talk to the king? Esther said that if I am not summoned to the king's presence, I cannot go because my head was separate from my body. And then, the king told As uh, Mordecai, the uncle told Esther this. He said, do not think in your heart that you escape in the king's palace any more than any other Jews. For if you remain completely silent in this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Then he said this, the most popular verse in the book of Esther, but yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. This is a picture of your average Christian who remain apathetic about the plight of the rest of the Christian. When you hear about persecution in India, persecution in South America, persecution in other nations, I mean, we heart is stirred a little bit, but we are not, you know, we are not stirred to pray because, but you forgot you are a priest, a priest intercede. So we don't really like to do all this intercession because, you know, I don't mind doing worship, I don't mind doing, you know, children, I don't mind doing something more fun, but, you know, it's not really my role. I, I'm not called to intercede, but let me tell you this. The role of the priest actually is to intercede, just like Esther. She was raised for such a time. She was queen to the king. That means you are the bride to your, to your husband. His name is Jesus. As bright, your role as the queen is supposed to intercede for your people, called the church. That means your role is very pivotal. You are God causing your race to be kings and priests, and part of the role of priests is to intercede. Eventually, this statement stir Esther so much. You know what she said? I will call for three days of fasting. Me and my mate and my entourage will go into fasting. We will ask the we will ask Yahweh to show us. And I believe during the time of fasting and praying, God gave her a strategy. Tell me she did not straight away go and approach the king and say, King, he didn't want to kill all my people. No, no, no. She said, King, I want to throw a party for you. Wow, what a beautiful strategy. What a wise woman. Instead of going to the king and say, I want to complain, you know, like you go to the MP and complain about yourself. He said, I want to complain about this person. No, he said, no, I want to throw a party for you. And then he said, on top of that, beside you, king, beside you, king, I want to invite Haman. Haman was so happy. He said, oh my goodness, the entire kingdom, only the king and me. Wow, you know, he was so, he was so puffed up. He thought that, wow, he's the only one that's being recognized. Long story short, at the second invitation, when the king went out to attend to some matters, and, you know, when, sorry, rather, when Queen, Queen Esther exposed the plot of Haman, Wow, beautiful things happened. When the king heard that, he was so angry, he stormed out of the palace. In the meantime, when Haman and Esther was alone, Haman grabbed her food, grabbed her clothes and started begging her. Then at a time when she was hag you know, begging her, holding her, the king came in and said, oh, you not only want to kill these people, you also want to you know, violate my wife. Oh. <laughs> God's wisdom is amazing. That means, you see, as the intercessor, God gave her the wisdom to know how to approach the king in this matter. Long story short, the very gelo that he built to hang Mordecai was the same gelo he was hanging in. 
The very cross that Satan built to kill Jesus is the very cross that God brought Satan to be hung with him in Calvary. At Calvary, not, not only did Jesus bring our sin and death to the cross, Jesus brought the satanic nature to be hung at the cross also. Jesus defeated the enemy. And therefore, if we can very quickly, Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, he says that having disarmed every principality, he make a public spectacle out of them. That he disarmed principality and power, he make a public spectacle, triumphing over them in it. That means the rose and all the principalities and demons that have succeeded for 4,000 years putting human under tremendous bondage. When Jesus came, he completely reversed that. A picture of Esther interceding for his people. Now, what does all this mean to you guys? That means your role as an intercessor is very pivotal because this role is, was given to Adam and Eve and then it was taken away, given to the Levites, which is a picture of the New Testament believer. That means your role, not only as kings, that you are priests, you are the intercede. Your intercession, your priest, your role as a priest that comes in between heaven and the world plays a significant role. You can reverse history. In case you do not know, today the church is going through massive invasion from the kingdom of darkness. All that you see in the West, all that you see in the different nation of how Christians are being persecuted or how believers are being marginalized, how the Bible is taken out of the school, how prayer is even forbidden in public school, how every vestiges of Christianity is being removed. Like we say, even today in America, until Donald Trump came, it was illegal. It was even not, uh, uh, I won't say it's illegal, but they make it uh, um, not acceptable to greet Merry Christmas. You have to say happy holiday because I'm not a Christian. So why do you say Merry Christmas? You should respect my right. So you just say happy holidays. You know, so 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 whatever that's taking place creeping slowly in the West, it is snuffing out every vestiges of your faith is creeping in Singapore. There'll be one day, you know, today we all know what is taking place among certain schools in, in America where they are getting drag queens to teach children why not, and they teach them how, how, and they are taught, children are taught about gay sex. It's horrendous. Your children will be exposed. Whatever that takes place in America eventually will be exported to different nations. That means the enemy is tightening your noose, and Christians are so, so very busy with only our own life. That means unless you are sensitive in the spirit, unless you are a believer that see macro picture of the God's timetable, you have no idea what the enemy is doing. That means he is plundering the kingdom of heaven. He is intimidating believer. He is shutting down every avenue of expression of your faith in different parts of the world. It starts in a small place, but eventually you grow. You think about it. In my generation, every Every, every individual that has SSA, same-sex attraction, they don't come out and identify themselves. They hide in the closet. Today, not only they come out, they become militant. They expect you to receive them. And if it's otherwise, you're anti. You're anti their tribe. It is gone completely changed, you know. Today, you can have, you know, men who decide to define themselves as a woman, they can go to the toilet. That means if you have children in your generation, hopefully, we pray by the grace of God, it doesn't happen in Singapore. When you have got children, they go to their toilet. If a man decides to identify himself as a woman, he can go and use the same toilet. Now, that's why, now, listen to this, yeah, let me wrap up with this. When, when Esther heard about what happened to the Jews, because he's in the palace, he thought he's safe. When believer happened, listen to all this news, but this America it won't come to Singapore. The same words that Mordecai said to Esther, hey, don't think because you're living in the palace, you're safe. Don't think because you don't live in America, you're safe. The same thing that they face, you'll come here. The Antichrist spirit, let me tell you something, the last days, the Antichrist spirit is going to raise up very strong. But praise be to the Lord. Christ is going to move stronger. Amen? Amen. This is not to create fear. It's awareness. Eventually, the enemy will be defeated. I don't care what you do. And I see the last chapter. We win. 
But doesn't mean we win means we do nothing. Yeah? Even though we see the end, the end chapter we win, but in the meantime, there are believers that we are responsibility. There are responsible, uh, responsibility that we need to take up. That's why you are kings and priests. Your role as priests is to pray. That's why I hope to raise up our prayer uh, a ministry. I'm glad we started online. I want to invite you on a Friday, alternate week, come by because this is to teach you. You know why, guys? One day, if ever, if ever public gathering is no longer encouraged in Singapore, that means you have to pray on your own. That means you have to intercede for your own family. You, you, we do not know what can take place. And this is not to alarm ourselves and say that, oh, it's going to be this. No, no. It's just to, just to uh, remind ourselves that if we get too slack, like Esther thinking that she's in the palace, she's safe, Mordecai said, hey, don't think that because you're in the palace, you're safe. Help will come from somewhere. If you don't have to pray for in other nations, it's okay. I'll raise other intercessors. No worries. But one day when help, when, you see, just as European, same. When Hitler attacked the Jews, the Europeans say, nothing to do with us. He's attacking the Jews. We are safe. Guess what? After the Jews, they came for them. So, in other words, I want to emphasize to you today. Today, the group that was wearing the ephod that took over from that entity that also be embedded with precious stone called Lucifer, the archangel, their role was high priest. And part of the role the high priest today, God has given to the church. God, through many years of sifting, he has finally separated between the unrighteous and righteous because of the blood of Jesus. The entire human race was tainted with the DNA of the enemy. That's why unless you're born again. That means I don't care what religion you are. I don't care how virtuous you are. I don't care how good you are as a person. If you're not born again, you're dead. That means you're dead spiritually. You cannot see the kingdom of heaven. We are beautifully saved by Jesus. Thanks be to the Lord. We thank God for His generosity. We thank God for His goodness. We thank God for His grace. We thank God for He has done everything through Christ. Amen. How many of you are, are thankful that God gave us everything? Amen. But as He blessed you everything, I pray that your eyes will be open of the significant role that you that God has placed you as intercessors. And I pray that you take up your roles as kings and priests. And intercessor as priests, they intercede. Just like Esther. Long story short before we go. So the end of the story was that Esther eventually went to see the king and interceded for, his, for her own people. And because she has access to the king, just like believers have access to our king, whatever that's taking place in the world, that means you have to keep in touch of what is taking place in China, how believers are being persecuted. In Middle East, how God is multiplying the believers, but how they are also being persecuted. We need to keep tap of what is happening in the different area that Satan is tightening the noose, and so that we can stand up as intercessor. Amen. May the Lord open your eyes. I know today this uh, topic is not the most popular topic. We would like to hear about blessing and the goodness of God. But God's goodness is also revealed in everything. Amen. And you have a pivotal role. You are the high priest. You are the priest, sorry. And the role of the priest is to intercede. Let me close with this. I think in the book of Hebrew, did I give you the, the verse in Hebrew chapter? I didn't. Uh, how come? Uh? I didn't give you Hebrew chapter 4, verse, I think, 14 and 15. Yeah, let me close with this. Chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. It says, Seeing then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. He is the great high priest. We are priests, yeah? He is the king, capital king. We are the small king. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but in all points tempted and as we are, yet without sin. This is your high priest who went through the heaven. Today, this high priest, the same book of Hebrews say, is up there interceding for you and me. And so you as he is, so are we. As he is interceding for you and me, we should also have an office in, on earth to intercede for the people on earth. Amen. The, 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 the fate of the body of Christ depends on the faithfulness of the, of the priests that are being called. And you are not called only to be king, but you are called to be priest. And with that, I want to invite you to stand.